Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. My good friend Troy sent me a note. Said, Steve, check out this story. It involves electric cars and sovereign immunity. You, wait, what? <laughs> I remember I joked the other day about how somebody should come up with a story involving like HOAs and civil asset forfeiture. So here we go. Rivian, that's a company that makes electric cars, wins court ruling over bid to halt $5 billion Georgia plant. And the immunity's in there. Hang on. Zachary Hansen and Maris Lutz wrote this, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. A Morgan County, Georgia judge dismissed a lawsuit that attempted to stop the construction of the plant that Rivian just started building. Six people who either live or own property near the 1,800-acre site filed the suit last year, accusing the state of assuming control of the property to illegally circumvent local zoning codes and land disturbance permits. The plaintiffs allege that the state acquired the project site to avoid the scrutiny and public opposition during local rezoning hearings. So you might know that if someone's going to build a big old plant right there near your house, they might hold hearings to see what the locals think of that. And so they hold these hearings, you can go and complain. But it turns out in many places, state land, land owned by the state, is not regulated the same way the land is regulated if it's owned by somebody locally, etc. State land is regulated by the state. So the judge ruled that zoning laws do not apply to government-owned land, even if it's being leased to a private company for economic development. So the state owns the land, and they're going to lease it to Rivian. And because of that arrangement, it gets it outside of the regulation of the locals. While the court may be sympathetic to local landowners adversely affected by the project, it is compelled to follow existing law, the court said. As such, the actions on the project are immune from any land use regulation by the county. His ruling is the latest for the state regarding the Rivian plant. Georgia's second largest economic development project by promise to jobs and investment. The company, which declined to comment on the outcome of the suit, is preparing to begin vertical construction on its 16 million square foot factory early this year. Cox Enterprises, which owns the Atlanta Journal of Constitution, also owns a 4% stake in Rivian. They disclose that to let you know that they actually do have a dog in this fight. So they're reporting about Rivian and they let you know that, oh, by the way, our parent owns a portion of that. Now, it is a new year, and this ruling is a defining new chapter as we look towards a bright future of success with Rivian, says the State and Joint Development Authority. An Atlanta attorney for the plaintiffs said his clients are considering an appeal. They'll have 30 days to file notice of such action. So the attorney said giving the state and local governments unmitigated power to greenlight development projects on public property is a dangerous precedent to perpetuate. But the judge is saying, this ain't precedent. I'm following precedent. I'm not making it. If the state were to say it was a valid economic use to put a liquor store next to a school, the state could theoretically buy the land, put a liquor store or bar or any other type of business next to a school, and just completely disregard local zoning ordinances. To us, that doesn't seem right. Well, here's the thing. That's the way the law is, though. And whether the state would actually do that is another thing altogether. Now, you might say, but Steve, you love to talk about things could happen theoretically and look at all the possibilities under the law. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But if somebody starts doing things that are absurd because the law allows them to, then you can actually run to the legislature and say, shouldn't you guys close that loophole or tighten it up just a little bit or something? Because don't forget, we talked before about a case called Kilo versus uh, New London, I believe is the name of the town. But Kilo is the case of the woman who had a house Beautiful little big pink house, little house. <laughs> they made a movie about it. And also, she was represented by the Institute for Justice, believe it or not. And um, the, the, the city came by and said, we want to take your house and all your neighbors' houses, knock them down, and give this land to a pharmaceutical company that wants to build a plant here. We'll pay you for the land, but uh, we're going to take your property through eminent domain because we think it's a better use of your land for there to be a pharmaceutical company on it. And she fought that all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, where it went 5-4. 5-4. She lost by one vote. And the interesting thing is, although they lost that battle, they won the war. Because that 
case had so much fallout publicity-wise that many, many, many states passed laws to prohibit that from happening. So that was a good result, but not for her. Meanwhile, her house did get knocked down, and then the plant never got built. Weirdest thing. So there is already precedent to suggest that the government knows better how to use particular land. And, like I said, most places, state land is subject to its own regulation. Local ordinances regulate things that are owned locally. And, of course, state land would fall outside that. So Rivian's factory is slated for rural property in southern Morgan and Walton counties, located roughly an hour east of Atlanta. The site consists of 28 parcels that were acquired by the Joint Development Authority. That's a government entity. The parcels were zoned for agricultural use and not industrial. So the locals had zoned them and said, this is agricultural. Think farmland. The JDA initially filed rezoning requests that were set to go before the Morgan County Commission. But the Georgia Department of Economic Development stepped in and assumed control of the project a month before the scheduled vote and withdrew the rezoning requests. So they're basically saying, we don't need to do this. We can skip this step altogether. So then... They filed this lawsuit. So during a November hearing, an attorney who represents the state argued that the judge should dismiss the lawsuit because state-owned land is not subject to local regulation, part of a legal concept called sovereign immunity. Plaintiffs have never cited a single case where a local restriction was imposed on state-owned property. The attorney for the plaintiffs here argued that state law only allows for a government's plans to supersede local zoning if it's for a public purpose. But the state countered that past economic development projects like that have survived similar legal challenges and have a legal precedent. The state also argued that the scale of the factory, which is expected to employ 7,500 workers, separates it from other private endeavors. But again, remember, the public purpose idea has been upheld by the Supreme Court in Kelo. They said, well, the public purpose here is if we build this big plant and it brings in all kinds of jobs then that's a public good. And so that's the thinking that you have to fight here. I'm not saying I agree with this, by the way. I'm just pointing out this is the law. So the judge agreed with the state, although he said the scale doesn't earn the project extra legal protections. So he just says it it, it hasn't anything to do with how big the plant's going to be. Obviously, that's relevant on some level, but that's not the deciding factor here. The state's argument also seems to suggest that the scale allows to be viewed differently from other private projects somehow recasting a private manufacturing plant into a public project. It does not, the judge wrote. The desired end result is still a private, for-profit manufacturing plant, not a public facility, but it is still on state land. A uh, similar zoning fight remains in an Atlanta court. This client's other attorneys filed a nearly identical lawsuit in Fulton County, where the Georgia Department of Economic Development's offices are based. That case, too appears to be an uphill climb. Fulton Superior Court Judge Thomas Cox Jr. ruled in April that the plaintiffs will need to post an upfront amount of money to cover the government's legal costs and attorney fees under what's known as a petition for bond. It's designed to discourage frivolous lawsuits against local and state government. The appeals court is reviewing the petition bond and whether it is warranted in the case because the judge ordered a bond of $365,000. And so... That's something you don't see very often. Now, one thing I'll point out, and the attorney is making an interesting point here. He said there still could be costly consequences if Rivian begins to build its factory. He said if his clients choose to appeal in Morgan County and are victorious, the EV startup would have to return the land to the way it was, which would probably cost them millions of dollars. And so he said they proceed at their own risk. It just depends on how confident they are that they're going to win. Posting a bond as a plaintiff is an interesting proposition. I've never actually seen it happen in a case that I was terribly familiar with, only in the news like this. And generally speaking, in America, I pay my attorney, you pay your attorney. And so that's how the American rule works, generally speaking, unless it's a fee-shifting statute. Once in a while, though, I've seen it where they can ask a party to post a bond, and it's usually on appeal. So if you go to court and you lose and you file an appeal, and there's a judgment against you that you're appealing, many appellate courts require you to post a bond equal to or exceeding the amount of the judgment. 
just to make sure you're not doing this just to delay paying. And so what happens is, let's suppose they get a judgment against you for $10,000. Court might say, well, you should post a bond of fifteen. dollars that way, the ten thousand is covered, the interest is covered, and oh, the other side's attorney fees are covered in case you get hit for those also. And so, I have had cases that I appealed where we had to post a bond, but that's a standard procedure on an appeal. But to ask a plaintiff to do it at the outset means a judge is looking at this, going, "I don't think you've got a real great chance on this one," but it looks like it's going to be an expensive fight. And so the other side probably said, can you ask them to post a bond? That's how silly and frivolous we think this is. So we'll see what happens there. But as of right now, the plaintiffs who live near this or own land near this project have lost. They can appeal it and see what an appeals court says. But I suspect that this is the kind of thing that would have to go all the way to the Supreme Court. And you'd have to get them in essence. And it's not right on point in the sense that this is not eminent domain, but you can see the logic being similar, where in Kilo they said, we found a better use for your property. We're going to give it to this pharmaceutical company or sell it to them. Uh, here they're saying, we found a better use for this property that requires us to ignore zoning laws, the local zoning laws. And because we're the state, we're exempt from that. And so I don't think that they're going to get very far on these appeals either. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, I've seen a few Rivians in traffic. I'm not too crazy about their looks. But uh, I applaud anybody who's trying to start a car company. I know how difficult that can be. Uh, I wrote a book about Preston Tucker and his battle to build the car of tomorrow. And we know what happened to him. So <laughs> it's, a, it's an uphill slog. It's very, very difficult. But Troy, thanks for sending that, my friend. Zachary Hansen and Maris Lutz wrote that for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Rivian wins court ruling over bid to halt $5 billion Georgia plant that they just started working on relatively recently. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. The harder I work, the luckier I get.